Hello, I'm Chris Richmond, and today I'm going to tell you about a little sound project I've been working on. I say little, it's actually turned into a bit of an obsession. Now, as some of you already know, I ring church bells, and got into that through my interest in recording sound. However, I've just landed myself a project which combines my love of both. Now, in the city of Norwich, a vast amount of money was raised to set up a training centre for bell ringers inside the tower at the Church of St Peter Mancroft. This facility opened last year, and has opened up a whole host of opportunities for aspiring ringers across the diocese and beyond. The Mancroft Ringing Discovery Centre hosts a ring of eight training bells, or dumbbells, which are linked to laptop computers running a software programme called Abel to simulate real ringing. But the default sound is a little plain and boring and this is where my involvement comes in. Wouldn't it be great to have the sounds of real bells played by the simulator? What would be even greater would be to have the sounds of some of our county's own historic church bells. Well, after a brief chat with Nicky Thomas, who runs the simulator sessions, it seems we can do just that. In fact, I have already curated and installed the sounds from over 30 towers into the Mancroft simulator, and today I'm about to record another. So how do I capture the sound of church bells? Stay tuned to find out more as we travel to All Saints Church in the village of Marsham, where I'll give you an insight into the recording process from start to finish. Now in order for this to work as desired, I plan a dedicated recording session where each bell is rung individually in order to capture the clean raw sounds needed to make them work in a simulator. At Marsham there are eight bells which gives us a full octave of notes to play with. On arrival at the church, I meet fellow North Norfolk coastal ringers Andrew and Anna, who will be assisting me. First, it's a climb up the network of ladders to access the belfry while the bells are down. Right, here we are then. Now, uh, all belfries are completely different from each other. Some have lots of room, some are very tight indeed. But here at Marsham, if you see in the background, we've actually got this wonderful platform over the bells, which is ideal because it means we have more chance of capturing the sound of all bells equally, rather than uh, have one that's a lot closer shouting into the microphone. It's not always ideal. So we should get some good results. Now I just have to squeeze through the wheels. You have to be slim to do this, but uh, word of warning, never try this when the bells are up, because you will most likely be killed if one of these was to go off balance. Right, one more ladder to go. Right, once I place my recorder up here on this platform, the first thing I must do is make sure the gain is turned right down. Now on my Zoom H5, it has to be right down to volume notch 2 out of 10 because the, uh, the loudness up here is uh, <laughs> something else. Yes, yeah, so I'll plot that somewhere in the middle and it gets the sound as evenly as possible. Right, the recorder's all set up. Now let's get back down into the ringing chamber and make some noise. Back in the ringing chamber, we first chime the bells to get a clean recording of them while they are hanging downwards. The art is to keep each bell as still as possible whilst ensuring the clapper still strikes. These recordings will come in useful later on. My turn. Once we have finished chiming, we then raise the bells one by one into the upward positions ready for full circle ringing. Stay there. <laughs> there it is. 
To ensure we get all the material we need, we must record at least two clean strikes of each bell, one at hand stroke and one at back stroke. There are subtle differences in sound on each stroke. Well done. Yep. Setting the bell on each stroke can often be very challenging. No pressure. Very nicely done. Care must be taken to avoid bumping the stay, which keeps the bell upright but causes an unwanted clattering noise as it makes contact with the slider. That noise, that's not a stay, is it? We're doing it, seem to do it before it. It's a slider, isn't it? It is a slider. Right, yeah, it should be. So it's doing it before the bell is properly set, isn't it? Yeah. So you can't do nothing about that. It almost seems to make a noise after you've stopped. Does it? So what is causing that peculiar clattering noise? Andrew climbs up to investigate. Just take the strain a second. Yep, yeah, right, it's the one in front of me. So when you're ready. It turns out that the bells are fitted with an unusual slider mechanism consisting of a metal pendulum which swings in a small arc when the stay makes contact. With a bit of luck, the noise won't prove too intrusive in the recording. Each bell in the tower is recorded in turn until all bells are captured. Then, finally, the bells are lowered. Okay, cut my hands to start with. Look to Travel's going, she's gone. bells down, the ropes are hung up on the spider and I can now safely retrieve my equipment from the belfry. Alright, result. Now let's see how they sound. With the recording session complete, it's back to the studio to get stuck into the editing. Okay, so I've just imported the sound file into my editing software. My program of choice is called Reaper, and I've been using it for several years now because it's so diverse and does everything I want it to do. First, I have to locate and edit all the individual sounds within the file, as the recorder was left running in the belfry for the whole session. Once this long and tedious process is complete, the edits are then exported into individual sound files and put into a folder. Next, I need to configure the sounds to allow them to work within Abel as desired.
This involves mapping each individual bell sound to a note or group of notes within the MIDI spectrum. Now, the moment of truth. Let's hear the magic as we run a bell and hear all the bells ringing together. Go, playing punt. That's quite impressive. Now let's compare that with a real recording of Martian bells. Finally, the sounds are taken to Norwich to be installed onto the simulators. All right, good morning, Nikki. Hello. Good morning. I'm going to do the bells for you. Oh, have you? Yeah. What's we got today? Well, we're going to try out the sound of Marshall, which I've just recorded. So, uh, yeah. Oh, that's very exciting. They've been very popular. Mm. All right, so the files are in the computer. Now let's see how they sound on here. See what your reaction is. Okay, excellent. They sound really good, don't they? Okay. It's like they're ringing there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now one of the things we haven't talked about is what was the actual purpose of a ringing simulator? People are probably thinking, oh, why the hell do you need a ringing simulator and you need bell ringers? Well, it gives us a chance to practice, we can improve our striking, and also it gives you the opportunity to ring when nobody else can hear you, so making mistakes and it, it's just us that hears. So if I show you now, I'll start yeah. with the simulator and if I want to hand it ringing and get going. The training bells handle just like real church bells and trigger optical sensors which tell the computer when the bell is striking. They can be used independently for private practice or linked together to form a ring, just like in a normal church tower. The addition of my recorded sounds mean that ringers get to experience the unique sounds of different towers they would otherwise not be able to hear or visit. It's oral history at their fingertips. Thanks for watching. Now for the obligatory closing paragraph. If you enjoy following my quirky, if slightly self-indulgent adventures, please don't forget to like and subscribe. This filmmaking lark just wouldn't be worth it without the support of watchers like you. Until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.